Hi, I'm Frank. I create art in a variety of mediums under the pseudonym Humble S. Theta. I also hold a PhD in cognitive neuroscience, specializing in how our brains generate meaning from what we perceive and how perception impacts our capacity for creative thinking. As an artist, I focus on the use of ambiguity in my work. This is because ambiguity, if used correctly, can activate your imagination when looking at art. I've recently started medically supervised ketamine therapy because of a lingering bout of treatment-resistant depression that has taken over my life for the past three years. Thankfully, this therapy has been exceptionally helpful in allowing me to access a sense of optimism in aspects of my life that have been otherwise dominated by an unyielding sense of hopelessness. I've also been lucky because my treatment clinic has been gracious enough to let me bring production equipment to sessions. This has allowed me the chance to record myself narrating while attempting to draw under the effects of ketamine. You will see and hear these effects as my efforts to remain coherent become increasingly difficult. In this first video, I try discussing the experience of ketamine from a somewhat clinical and often personal perspective, while also occasionally talking about visual aesthetics and the experience of creating and viewing art in terms of how the brain generates meaning. I've been so excited about creating this video and hope to continue providing this content as a way to clarify some of the misconceptions and hesitations regarding ketamine and its potential mental health benefits. I hope you enjoy my first attempt. And if you do enjoy this, drop a like on the video to let me know. Okay, let's get into it at about one minute after my shot was administered. All right, so the effects uh, take a little while to get into. Uh, for me, the hardest thing really is just getting comfortable talking while, while I'm actually going through this. So. Uh, this first little part is just going to be me trying to get myself loosened up, actually talking my way through what I'm doing on the screen. It's so weird. Like I watch, I watch so much Twitch, but um, <laughs> I don't know how those guys do it. All right. So as the effects start to kick in, uh, there's a little bit of a sluggishness. And I'm hoping that, that I'll be able to work through that. I'm hoping that that doesn't hinder me from being able to, uh, to say and articulate things while, while I'm working, but it's quite possible that, that I won't even be able to make any sense in a few minutes. And we're just going to go with it. All right, so the first uh, visuals, it's kind of um, a shimmering, just a, a slight vibration right around the edges of the vision, a little bit of blurring of the vision. And there's a hint of a uh, tunnel vision that starts to creep in. Uh, there's a physical sensation of like kind of sinking into my seat. A uh, sense of, of feeling heavy, like being pulled into the seat. There's a little bit of double vision. A little difficulty focusing. Trying to work through that. All right. Hmm. So it's definitely kicking in now. And I get into this phase where it's like everything slows down. Everything just kind of 
gets quiet. Just kind of going with the flow, seeing what happens. Trying to remind myself not to be too tense, to just kind of release, just let things come. It's actually really difficult to kind of stay focused on something. There, there's this sense that the entire screen is like slowly, it's falling away while I'm perfectly still. There we go. The psychology and aesthetics it's like it's just this big open field. All kinds of different things can be explored. There's this trippy aspect that I feel like a lot of people, they're hesitant towards or, or they're scared of. And they don't need to be, they just need to be able to find a way to trust themselves to connect in with themselves. The weird thing with ketamine is like, well, one of the weird things with ketamine is like, there's this complete loss of time. Within the moment of it, it's like, you, you can't figure out, am I here right now? Is this just a few seconds or, or has this been 10 minutes and that's I mean maybe that's the, the strangeness of it and that's the great part that's the best part is the strangeness maybe that's what helps you open up explore those parts of your brain that have been hiding in corners the parts where new connections can be made It's just, it's interesting. <laughs> when the song changes, the entire vibe kind of changes. All right, let's get into it. A little bit more right here. I can understand how this would be scary or terrifying for some people. But we're all strong enough to be able to understand what our minds are going through. It just takes time. just takes time and energy. So right here I'm looking at, for a second there I thought I, I was looking at like a solar system, you know, something out of like interstellar. But then it, I lost it. <laughs> uh, it was there and then it, it went away. It almost looked like the, uh, what was it? Event horizon line right there. But then, nope, I lost it. <laughs> All right, let's zoom back out. Let's go play somewhere else. The great things about ketamine treatment. For me, it was um, having in, like an internal access to optimism for the first time in a long time. I, I had been struggling with um, a sense of hopelessness. I've been struggling with that for so long that that like I had forgot what it felt like to um, to to actually you know feel optimism. And uh, ketamine helped with that. 
it helped bring it back into like this is something that is you can experience this is something that that you're capable of experiencing is optimism i know that that might sound strange but it's interesting how like with with ketamine you can you're capable of having coherent thoughts but it's like between the parts of the brain generating the thoughts and and it's capable of being aware of its own thoughts and the parts of the brain that are uh, in control of motor neurons that are working for your you know for your lips and whatnot uh there's a big gap <laughs> and um it's just kind of hard to to articulate sometimes the things that are coming to mind but sometimes you get lucky and sometimes they get out let's see let's try somewhere else to play it looks like, uh, again, it still looks like I'm from above looking down, and that's a nice little island to play with. Let's see. There's such a weirdness to this, a strangeness, a strangeness that's comfortable, or a strangeness that can become comfortable. Like that movement. Sorry, <laughs> I just got lost in my own little trippy wave. So here we are with aesthetics. In my personal opinion, the ultimate goal is really to create something that just gets people to contemplate. You just want to get people to activate their imagination. Doesn't matter what the medium is, doesn't matter the format, any of that stuff. You just want them to activate their imagination. You want them to start to generate new meaning from farther associates than near associates. So how your brain works when it comes to generating meaning and memory plays a big role in this is that you generate a lot of your meaning based on object recognition and object recognition allows you to store useful information about objects that you see into what's called near associations. So when I say fly trap, you, s you immediately think of a fly. So that fly is a near associate to a fly trap. But the imagination is, if I were to say fly trap, and you were just to think of something like asparagus. That's a remote association or a remote associate. That's the imagination at play. That's part of the brain's ability to do what's called divergent thinking. So for most of our daily lives, we work through uh, what's called convergent thinking. Convergent thinking is us is the way the brain, it's a very efficient model of uh, just narrowing down thinking to one correct 
final solution. Or that's how we solve our problems. Divergent thinking, on the other hand, provides options. Divergent thinking is just to the brain's ability to generate multiple possible solutions. It's not, it's not relying on any single one. It's not committed to any single one. It just wants to provide you with options. And that is at the core of creativity. So that's why I say like with art, or at least for me, I want my art to provide people with something that they can contemplate. I don't want them just to comprehend it. I don't want it to just be a one-liner, if you will. Something that they can see and then instantly through near associations pull up, you know, recognition and an understanding. I want them to look at it and then just have their own individualized experience through contemplation. I would really like this to swirl if I could. Let's see if we can get some swirls in here. There we go. All right. Lately, I've been having this thing with fingers. Like, I feel like I got a finger here. I just can't quite get it right. Let's see. Yeah. Maybe. Tighten this up a little bit. Yes. I'm finally starting to uh, come down the other side. But usually ketamine treatment lasts about an hour. The first, um, the first five minutes you're getting yourself comfortable. There's a little bit of a physical sensation. Uh, the next 10 minutes is kind of a, a steep climb to to a peak um, and then once you hit the peak you start to slowly roll off for the next 30 minutes or so and it's a gradual decline back down to earth you start to come back to your senses fully I got lucky today I picked a really good color palette to play with. For me, creating visual content like this helps me to just kind of fall deeper into that uh, dissociative state. And what, how ketamine helps the brain is it allows you to get into that dissociative state. What the research is saying is that that's where people are finding the, the mental health benefits. It's so easy to get lost in your own thoughts. Sometimes when they become ruminations, that's when they become unhealthy. When it becomes a cycle of thoughts, you keep thinking the same series of events over and over, and the brain just kind of creates a new pattern, and you get locked in, and you have to find some way to break out. You know you're stuck, but you just, you're unable to do it consciously. I 
feel like ketamine helps me with that. It helps me to be able to recognize that that little tiny thing that I was fixated on <clears throat> was just one small aspect. There's a whole wide variety of other possible conclusions, understandings, and potentials. It helps me just kind of open up my imagination and in a sense, just allows my brain to heal itself. Oh, I like that. That looks nice. It's almost like a flower or a hand. Oh, again, a hand. <laughs> Something kind of spraying out. Let's get that one. Where's the pointer finger and the thumb? It's almost like they're just coming out of the water. All right, well at this point, my vision is starting to come back. Almost able to focus again on objects. My speech is still going to be a little slurred for for about another 20 or so minutes. But we're finally coming back down to earth. Beautiful. Stretch this a little bit. Oh no, oh no, I made a tidal wave. That's okay. As Bob Ross would say, a happy little accident. me wants them to touch but I think I'm okay with them give ourselves a little bit of a lip I just want to play. I just want to play with these little areas and explore these little areas. See what they want me to do or what they suggest I do. this a little bit of a wave. Again, it looks like a topographical map. Like looking down at mountain, uh, at the valleys between canyon walls. And yet elsewhere it looks like the ocean and islands. I'm gonna pull this in just a little bit here. There we go. Stretch this out. Just enough to give the impression of something recognizable. And that's it. Unfortunately, my head was still a little fuzzy at the end and I forgot to save the, uh, the last part of the file. But uh, nonetheless, 
Thank you for watching. Share your comments below and click that like button if you enjoyed the video.